not bad, not bad. We're pretty much done with use effect as well as conditional rendering for that matter. But before I let you go, let me share one particularly useful resource, which is from React Docs, and it essentially covers use effect alternatives. Now, before you start yelling at the screen, yes, there are still use cases for use effect. So no, we did not waste our time on learning use effect, especially if you consider how much code out there is still using use effect. Now, since the article is quite extensive, I'm just going to give you a general gist. You see, when the React hooks came out, I believe it was version 16, developers started using use effect for pretty much everything. And as a side note, yes, I was one of those developers as well, so I'm not casting any shade. However, such approach basically to have use effect on top of use effect can potentially lead to clunky code, basically hard to read and manage, as well as some performance issues. So in this article, the React team is simply encouraging the community to consider alternatives before jamming yet another use effect in the component. And if I may make a suggestion, try to find some free time to skim through this resource. Again, you don't have to go line by line. Take a look at the general ideas. And the next time when you want to set up a use effect, just come back to it and see whether there is a better alternative. Quite often, you'll be able to achieve the same functionality by adding logic straight in the JSX or by setting up an extra function in the component. Lastly, one major use case for use effect used to be data fetching, something we already covered in the previous videos. However, as I'm recording this course iteration, at this point in time, there are some great libraries, for example, React Query, which actually allow us to fetch data with just one line of code. So basically without doing too much work, we already can use less use effect instances in our applications. As you can see in the code example, we simply install the library, use a custom hook, and right away get back data, error, loading, and a bunch of other useful stuff about our request. What's more, such libraries also take care of things like caching and synchronization, so it's no surprise that they are gaining popularity with the speed of light, especially for bigger projects with bunch of requests. And yes, as a side note, we will build a project later on in the course with React Query. Now, does that mean that you have to use such library in a small project where you have only a few GET requests? No, I probably wouldn't do that. Just something to think about when you start working on your own projects. Simply be mindful and consider alternatives.